Hello Noble Ones, welcome back to my channel. This is the Metatron speaking. Now today we're going to study a little bit more about life in medieval England. We will discuss both the Anglo-Saxon period and the Norman period. Britannia, the southern and central part of the Isle of Great Britain, a province of the Imperium Romanum, the Roman Empire. The Romans departed from Britannia in 400 Anno Domini, and from 597 to 1066 we have a period known as the Anglo-Saxon period. 1066 being the date of the Battle of Hastings, when William I, better known as William the Conqueror, will establish his power over what will be known as Norman England. Now, of course, medieval England is a huge topic. It's a massive topic. So today we will focus on taxation. At that time, numerous taxes and payments were imposed on all levels of feudal society by the upper echelons. Hence, for this video I have decided to focus on some examples of the sort of things that suffered taxation. But how did taxation work in medieval England? Well, simply put, we're discussing the system that noblemen excogitated to pay for royal expenses. In Anglo-Saxon England, the main form of taxations were land taxes. However, custom duties and fees to mint coins were also imposed. In medieval England, there was much counterfeiting and abasement of currency. The only coins in official circulations were silver pennies. Although pounds, silver marks and shillings also existed as notional coins for financial reckonings. There were also rouen or rouen pennies, equal to a halfpence. There were also other denominations sometimes referred to, as for example the aura of the Domesday survey and the gold mark, which was worth six pounds. AIDS. Aids were taxes on movable goods imposed from late in the 12th century onward, usually for specific purposes. Saladin's tithe was levied in 1188 to finance the Third Crusade, and Richard's first ransom was met with another in 1193. Danegeld. This was a tax originally imposed to raise money to pay off the Viking invaders of the 10th century, and later to pay the army to defend the country from them. It was used as a basis for later supernumerary taxes as well, yielding well over £3,000 to Henry II, who eventually abolished it. The standard assessment was originally six shillings per hide, but this was reduced by Henry's time to two shillings per hide. Asset. An asset was a clearing made in the royal forest or other uncultivated area, which, since it increased a man's holding, was taxed. Boon. Boon work, also known as love boons, was work over and above the usual labour service which unfree peasants had to render at the command of their lord. This additional labour was usually recompensed with food and drink, but could greatly interfere with the peasants' own farming activities. Jews. Along with the set monetary tax value set on land, exempli gratia, a manorial domain, many also had to pay Jews, usually in kind. This meant that the owner of the land had to pay in fish, goats, honey, eggs, hens, iron, salt, or whatever it produced. Entry fine. When a son or other heir wished to inherit the lands of his father, an entry fine had to be paid, also called relief. This was usually quite a large amount of money, just a few shillings per acre for peasants, and was imposed in addition to Harriet and mortuary. 
Knights would have to pay around 100 shillings for their fee, and great lords massive sums, running into thousands of marks by the time of King John. It is reported that William Fitzalan paid 10,000 marks in 1214. Herbage Herbage was the right to pasture animals in Meadowland, a right which was highly prized and hence highly priced. Herbage often formed part of the assessment of the peasants' or villagers' holdings. Heriot Heriot was paid when a peasant died, the lord taking the best beast or chattel of the deceased. Sometimes it was combined with a relief or entry fine which had to be paid by the inheritor. Labour service An unfree peasant, for instance villains and cottagers, had to give the manorial lord time sometimes as much as three days a week at certain seasons when they worked on his land. This was one of the standard conditions on which these peasants held their land and was also known as weak work. Lee Wright. This was a fine paid by unmarried villain women for not being chaste. It was held that villains and other unfree peasants belonged to the Lord and actions such as unchastity might affect their value to him. Merche or Merchant. A peasant had to pay when his daughter married. If the woman marrying had no one to give her away, she had to pay herself for the right to marry. This tax normally amounted to six pennies or so and applied only to unfree peasants. It could be more, especially if the woman wanted to marry outside her village. Mortuary. This was a secondary heriot paid to the local rector or church, usually the second best beast or household goods. Mulcher. Servile peasants were obliged to grind their corn at the lord's mill if he owned one, and for this privilege they paid a certain proportion of the grain, known as mulcher. It was one of the most irritating imposition for the peasants, not least because of the fraudulent practices of millers. Panage Panage was the right to pasture swine in woodland, a right which might be free or might be paid for with an annual rent. Skewtage this was a payment given to a lord instead of providing military service, and mainly applies to knights and petty nobles. Such men held their land from the king or some earl or baron in return for the provision of armed men for up to 40 days a year. The allowed them to commute this service to a simple fine, traditionally one pound per knight's fee owed. The payment only had to be made when the king demanded the service, around every five years or less was normal but sometimes additional surcharges were made. Tollage Tollage was a rent or tax which varied annually in amount and frequency and was assessed according to the size of the peasant's holding and number of animals. The lord had a right to tollage at will, so many peasants tried to re regularise the payment. But even after it had become fixed by custom, a special tallage could be levied arbitrarily. Tithe a tithe or tenth part was the amount owing to the church from a peasant produce, assessed after the harvest. Not all peasants had to pay tithes. Alright, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron. Also, if you like or even prefer this sort of historical videos over the other form of content that I make on my channel and you want to communicate to me that you would like me to focus on these, please give me a thumbs up, let me know in the comments below and share this video because if I see a lot of views generated from, for example, social networks such as Facebook, Twitter and Tumblr, then I will know that this is the sort of videos that I've got to focus on. Thank you very much for your time and remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. Goodbye.